Hello and a very good morning to all the participants who have joined us today for this webinar session. So today uh, I'm here, I'm Snehal, I'm a career counselor with ERA Foundation and I'm here with you all to talk to you all about some of the unconventional career options that's there for students. Apart from the most common ones, the normal and the popular ones that we all know, apart from these career options, what are some other unconventional uh, something that's unique, something that's not very common, but it is interesting, lucrative and successful. So today I'm here to talk to you all about some of the career options that's available for students apart from the traditional and the conventional ones. Yeah. So moving on, I would like to give you a brief about the company that I work with. So I'm Snehal, I'm a career counselor with ERA Foundation and we at ERA Foundation, so we are based out in Bangalore and we are a not-for-profit organization and we are dedicated to improving the quality of education uh, across India, higher education, secondary education. And we are trying to create social impact in the field or in the area of education by doing various different activities. One of them is counseling. So when I talk about counseling, we are mainly focusing here on career counseling. So we have our own career guidance tool called MARG. So we have a multi-dimensional tool assessing students on their aptitude, interest, subject performance, as well as personality. So this helps students to understand their strengths and their weaknesses, and it will also help them in choosing their career streams or career options. And apart from career counseling, we are also into rating. So if you look at various institutes and universities that's there in India, we also rate institutes and universities based on various different indicators. We assess them on what are the kind of facilities that they are providing, how is the educational quality, what, how is the infrastructure there, and various different indicators like this. And we rate the, uh, we rate the colleges. And the last one that we are into is assessment. When I mean assessment here, I'm completely focusing on entrance exams. So when I talk about assessments, we conduct uh, entrance exams for various engineering institutions, private institutions across India. And uh, we also conduct the Comet K exam from starting till the end. So if you, are all, if you all are aware of the Comet K exam, we also conduct the Comet K exam. So that's just a brief about the kind of work that we do in ERA Foundation. So moving on, I will be focusing on the uh, topic that is unconventional career paths for students. So today in this particular webinar, I'm going to talk to you about some of the offbeat career options or some of the unique career options that's ahead of students. And these days, some of them are really trending. And most of the people who are into this particular career have also been really successful. And if you are a student who has joined us today, and if you're interested to know about how to get into this particular career, then I will also give you information about the career path. And I will also give you some information about the institutes or private uh, institutes or government institutes that offer this particular program or course. Yeah. So just to introduce all to this particular topic, we all know that in India, medical, law, engineering, business management, all of these courses or all of these career options are most sought after. And most of them tend to choose these career options apart from the, apart from the rest of them. And although these options are very popular and although uh, these are the traditional ones and although most of them have been successful in this career, not all the students would be interested to take up this career path. Some of them would like to take uh, or choose a particular career based on their interest or based on their hobby. So for these students who are not really interested in the traditional or the conventional or the popular career options, they would look for different different options that's available or they would also try to see what are the what are some of the career options that matches their interests so although there are a lot of different career options that's available for students when i'm talking about unconventional career paths do not think that it is really easy although this is beneficial and although most of them have been successful in this career path 
it is not very easy to pursue some of these career paths. One being the popular ones are there in most of the colleges and universities, but some of the uh, courses or some of the career options that's not very popular are not available across the country and a lot of educational programs are also not there and even if programs are there there are there is lack of guidance because not most of them have really pursued these careers so if you want to approach someone or if you want to know about that particular career path you might not have plenty of people to guide you and yes, when you want to uh, get into a career path or when you want to choose your career that is different from what most of them are doing, there might be some objections from your own peers, from your own parents or teachers. And some of them might consider that this is against uh, the normal career options that most of them choose. And uh, one, more, uh, one more concern in pursuing unconventional career path is Although you're very, very talented, although you want to pursue a particular career, you might not have a proper platform to showcase your talents. So these are some of the challenges that's there in pursuing unconventional career paths. But uh, apart from all of these challenges, most of them who have pursued unconventional career paths, the ones that I will be talking about later on in my presentation, most of them have worked hard. They've been they have dedicated their time and efforts to that particular career options and they have been highly successful in the fields so if you're someone who wants to do something out of the box something away from the ordinary then you need to be really dedicated and put in a lot of efforts to make this career a successful one for you and uh, the foremost benefit of choosing something or choosing something that's really unique is there'll be a lot of job satisfaction or work, satisf work satisfaction. At the end of the day, you'll be really happy that you're doing something that you really enjoy or you're doing something that you were always interested in. So this is just to give you all a brief about unconventional career paths that's available for students. So moving on, let's look at some of the unconventional career paths that's really there. So just to keep the session interactive, I have uh, polls for you. So I will be starting with my first poll. You can all look at your screens. You can all look at your screens. So the first poll question is, do you have the zeal to help people in rural areas, visit Indian villages and engage in rural and community development activities? Are you someone who wants to uh, work for the betterment of society, especially in a village setup or in a rural setup? Do you really want to help people? Do you really want to work for issues of people in the rural area? I will just give you all few seconds to respond to this. Okay, I will end the poll. 80% of the people who have joined us today uh, are really willing to help people in the rural areas. They want to engage in various activities that's there uh, and they want to work for the development of the community. So let us look at what I am going to talk about and what is the career option. So the career option that's available for students is rural studies. Rural studies is a growing field now in India, but it's not quite popular like the ordinary or the normal ones like engineering, medical law. It's not quite popular. But if you're someone who wants to engage your time and who wants to work for various rural and community development activities, then you could consider rural studies. So if you consider rural studies, you will be uh, on a day to day basis, you will be um, trying to help people understand about the issues that's there and how to improve economy in rural setup and how to work towards the betterment of the situation in a village. And in your rural studies course, you will be learning more about animal husbandry, about forestry, about uh, forest uh, farm management, about child development, about environment, about agriculture and various different issues related to community. 
uh, the society. So if you're someone who's really willing to help people in Indian villages, or if you want to work towards the betterment of uh, Indian villages, and if you want to improve the situation there, then you could pursue bachelor's in rural studies after your 11th and 12th. You could take up any particular stream in your 11th and 12th, and then you could choose bachelor's in rural studies. And once you complete your graduation, if you're further interested to interested to study then you could also do masters in rural studies in after your graduation so most of the uh, colleges that uh, offering rural studies most of them are in gujarat but there are various different cities also that offer this particular course so i've just listed out few of them if you are really interested in uh, rural studies then you could research more about this course and more about the eligibility criteria and the colleges that are offering this particular course so some of the universities or institutes that's offering rural studies is bhavnagar university gujarat BRS College of Rural Studies, Gujarat, and there is also Sabargram Seva Mahavidya like Gujarat, and there is Hemchandra North Gujarat University that's also in Gujarat. So there's one more uh, institute in Uttarakhand that is Dev Sanskriti Vishwavidya. So these are just like some five institutes that I've listed out. But if you want more information, you could again research about the colleges. But uh, as per my research, most of the colleges are based out in Gujarat. And uh, after your after completing your rural studies, you might ask, what, what is the scope for me? What do I do apart from working in villages? What are some of the other career opportunities that's available for me? So you could work with various government organizations and government departments, even private sectors also hire for people to work on rural issues. And there are also several NGOs who work for rural issues. So you can you will also get an opportunity to work for these NGOs and private organizations. Apart from that, if you're someone uh, who is willing to be self-employed then you can also earn your own source of income in the field of agriculture horticulture animal husbandry farming nursing nursery farming all of this also can be uh, some of the options for self-employment but if you're looking for a full-time opportunity then you could consider joining the government departments or the private organizations or even ngos a lot of them hire for people to work with them for various different rural issues okay so yeah so moving on the next one that i would like to talk to you all about is event management event management is again a really trending career option and also a lucrative career option for most of the students although it's not very popular uh, very popular like the other options that we have so event management is nothing but if you are interested in organizing or planning any particular event so event managers what they do is they plan various weddings they plan various corporate events they plan different concerts exhibition seminars they do not only plan they look into budgeting they look into what is the kind of decoration that's required they look into what is the theme of the particular event they also look into uh a various uh, various way, uh, different departments like food music all that needs uh, to be included in a particular event they look into all these issues they uh, whatever money has been collected for the events they budget it accordingly and they do all the planning that's required to make an event a successful one so they work with different different uh, sectors so if you're looking at some of the career opportunities that's there you could work for fashion industry you could work for newspaper houses or publishing houses even in the corporate uh, sectors most of the corporate companies when they launch a particular new product or when they have big conferences or events they hire event managers to organize the entire event for them and even travel and tourism sector also hires uh, event managers and even in the hotel industry when they have big events happening they hire event managers even productions houses also higher event managers. So if you're thinking of what do I do, what are the courses for me, then after your class 12th here, again, there is no stream restriction. You could take up any stream in your 11th and 12th. After that, you could do a BBA or a BMS, that's Bachelor in Management Studies in Event Management, or you could also do a certificate program or a diploma course in event management. After your graduation, if you're further interested to 
uh, know more about this field, then you could also get into master's in event management or you could do a PG diploma in event management. So these are some of the courses that you could look into in the field of event management and um, also somebody who is a capable event manager and if he or she has studied by himself and wants to be self-employed, then they can be a consultant for various different corporate companies or private organizations, or they could set up their own event management company on his, on his or her own. So that's also one of the options that you could look at. Uh, so some of the institutes that's offering event management courses in India are Event Management uh, Development Institute, Mumbai. There's National Institute of Event Management in Pune, Hyderabad, Bangalore, Ahmedabad, Delhi. So they have different, different campuses. There's also Alliance University in Bangalore offering this particular course. Then there's International Institute of Event Management in Mumbai. Most of the cities, Mumbai, Delhi, uh, Bangalore, Hyderabad, uh, Chennai, Chandigarh, all of these uh, cities have a lot of courses in the field of event management and there are also short-term certificate or diploma courses also available in the field of event management. Uh, so there's also Amity uh, Institute of Event Management in New Delhi. So these are some of the institutes that uh, you could look at. So if you're someone who is excited about uh, events and if you're someone who can really plan and organize a particular event, coordinate with different set of people, and if your communication skills is really good, if you can manage different, different tasks, then you could also consider event management as one of the career option. Okay. So moving on, I have one more poll for you all. I would request you all to look at your screen. Yeah. So my poll question for you all is, are you passionate about fitness and do you want to help people transform their life? Yes or no? I will just give you all a few seconds. Okay, I'll be ending the poll. So 83% of the people who have joined us say they are passionate about fitness and they also want to help people transform their life. And some of them are not interested. So 16% say no. So let us, I think most of you are all would have guessed what the next career option is. So the next one is fitness training. So these days we know that a uh, lot of Indian youth and a lot of people, even uh, all the working professionals are concerned about fitness, are concerned about their lifestyle, about their health and nutrition, and they follow n number of diets and they do a lot of exercises. So if you're also someone who's interested in uh, fitness, if you're someone who likes to keep yourself fit and also is, are someone who's really dedicated in following all the fitness routines and are aware of various different diets, and if you're interested to make a career in this field, then you really can make a career in this field because most of them have, who have made a career in this particular field have also been really successful. So let's talk about fitness trainers. So fitness, fitness trainers usually will lead a particular group or they lead or they teach individuals or group fitness classes. And they also exercise, uh, they also design some exercise programs for individuals based on their height, weight, based on their fit, based on their lifestyle, based on the food that they are consuming and based on if they have any health problems or any other issues. Be, cons taking all this into consideration, they design exercise programs for individuals or for groups. And fitness trainers are not only specialized in one particular field, they could be specialized in different, different areas. If someone could be fit, uh, specialized in aerobics, another person could be uh, specialized in kickboxing or boxing, someone else could be specialized in dancing or they could be specialized in weightlifting, yoga. So there are different, different areas under fitness itself. So what they do is they uh, develop various different exercises and they look at various different exercise programs that could be 
used to train individuals and groups. So they focus on stretching, strength training, exercising. They also motivate and train their clients on attaining their fitness goals. So some of them come to gain weight, some of them come to reduce weight, some of them just want to remain fit, and some of them just want to follow different, different diets. So based on the requirement of their clients and based on the goals that has been set, they motivate and they train their clients. So they educate about where they educate their clients or they provide them information about various different aspects on nutrition, lifestyle, health, about sleep, about weight control and how to also maintain good health. So these days in India, we see that number of uh, gyms are coming up and most of the cities, most of the towns have a lot of gyms and fitness centers, yoga centers, dance centers. So there are plenty of options even for fitness trainers. So you could either work with sports clubs, gyms, fitness centers, yoga centers, or you could even work with fitness equipment manufacturing companies. So even you could work with clothing brands that are uh, that particularly uh, focus on fitness clothes or that particularly focus on your workout clothing like your Nike, Reebok, Puma. They also hire fitness trainers or you could also look at joining any sports team or games team like your hockey team, football team. But to get into a, a fitness trainer in a particular sports team, you require some years of experience. But at the initial stage, you can join gyms and fitness centers as fitness as a fitness coach or a fitness trainer. So there is requirement of fitness trainer in all of these areas. So you could consider that. And after your 11th and 12th, you could pursue diploma in fitness management or fitness training certification program. And here again, there is no restriction. But if you're someone who's from a sports background and who has uh, participated in a lot of physical activities and all of that, and if you are regularly interested in uh, physical activities and sports, then you could really uh, be successful in this career. So having an interest in the area of sports and fitness is also necessary. And after your graduation or after your diploma, you could also go ahead and do a PG diploma in fitness management. So if you're concerned about which are the institutes or which are the centers that is offering fitness training or diploma or certification program, then there's a Goldstream Fitness Institute. They have different, different branches across India. So you could go look into their website and get more details about the program. There is also GFFI Fitness Academy that is Growth for Fitness Instructors Fitness Training Institute, which also offers a diploma program in fitness management. And uh, like you all are aware of various fitness brands like Puma, Reebok, Nike. So even Reebok and Nike have their own certification program. So Reebok has their uh, fitness instructor certification program. So you could also join that or you could also join Nike aerobics course if you're interested in aerobics. Then there's also one more uh, organization, private organization called Better Fitness for You, BFY. They also offer various certification programs in the area of fitness. And there are some small time on the, there are also some private institutes who provide certification program for fitness training, even for students who have finished their high school. So if you're someone who's interested to make a career in fitness, then you could research more about the courses that's available. And you could also look at which are the institutes providing these particular courses. So that's about fitness training. And in India, as we all know, this is again a very uh, trending and it's growing. So you could also think of this as a career option. Okay, moving on, uh, one more career option that I would like to talk to you all about is photography. Most of you would be on various different social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Tumblr. And on a day to day basis, we see a lot of pictures and social media is all about all the visual factors. So we see a lot of pictures and images. And if you are someone who can really capture good pictures or if you are someone who's passionate about this field then you could really think of photography as a career option this is also a growing career option and people have been really successful even in the field of photography 
although it is not photography is not a career option for all if you are interested if you have uh, mm -hmm. really practice photography and if you have learned certain skills then you can make your uh, portfolio or then or you could make your social media pages very very interesting and a lot of audience could reach out to you but photography by itself is an art and it requires a lot of patience and perseverance for you to click certain images that are really appealing for people and people uh, that people really like so in photography also there are a lot of different specializations that's there considering these days social media advertising and media even the fashion industry is all growing there is lot of opportunity in the field of photography for indian youth so if you're someone who's interested in photography the, these days there are new branches that have uh, that are gaining lot of popularity that is food photography there's travel photography there's wildlife photography and even wedding photography all of these different branches in the field of photography have been uh, really popular uh, in the past few years and also is trending currently so you could think of what are the pictures or what is the content that you want to share with people or what are the pictures that you like to click so you need to have your own genre or you need to focus on your own theme theme are you someone who is interested in clicking pictures of nature are you someone who's clicking uh, interested in clicking pictures of animals cities or people you need to think of your own theme and you need to focus on that and although there is no certain requirement for you or no certain uh, academic requirement to get into the field of photography some of them uh, some of them uh, learn by themselves and they look at various different videos and uh, different different tutorials and they learn but people who wanted to get who want to get into professional photography really look at uh, different courses that's there in the area of photography so if you're someone who's interested to make a career in the field of photography then you could pursue undergraduate diploma or degree in photography there are n number of institutes providing this particular course and after your graduation you could also consider are uh, taking up a pg diploma in photography and uh, you might think after my photography some of them are self employed they have their own uh, social media handles and people approach them but people who are looking to work with different companies there is a lot of option there as well all the press and publishing houses like your magazines newspapers websites all of these uh, requires photographers and also advertising agencies on a day to day basis there are lot of advertisements uh, so they also look at various different photographers and even industries and educational institutes they want to have their own photographers to click pictures of various different events that happen in their industry or various different events that happen in their educational setup so there is a variety of job opportunities in different different sectors even in the field of photography you could also think of if you do not want to work with a group or work with a company you could also think of being self employed or having your own studio and offering a range of services in photography itself so if you uh, there are some of the institutes that i have listed out for the field of photography as well so there's film and te television institute of india in pune there's a uh, symbiosis school of photography in pune and there's there's mass communication research center jamia university new delhi there's institute of mass communication in manipal there's national institute of uh, photography in mumbai and there is sir j j institute of applied art mumbai then there's also indian institute of digital art and animation kolkata there are many more institutes and colleges if you're someone who's interested to make a career in the field of photography but uh, before even enrolling yourself for any courses it is better if you have your own social media handle or your own website or blog to showcase the kind of pictures that you have clicked and once you share it with your family members or friends and then they share it with uh, other people there are lot of chances of getting noticed and then your fan base or audience base also will increase so that's one way of creating portfolio in the field of photography as well yeah so before we move on i have one more poll for all of you you can just look at your screens So 
so are you someone uh, are you an are you a painter or are you a art performer are you or are you someone who's interested in the field of art and also have a deep interest in the field of psychology yes or no I'll just give you all a few seconds. Okay, let me just end the poll. There are 54% of them uh, who's interested in the field of art and also has interest in the field of psychology. And there are 45% of them who are not interested. But some of you might not know about this particular career but this is also quite popular and this is also one of the unconventional career options that you could really look at that is art therapy so art therapy uh, is a form of expressive therapy therapy or a counseling session happens one-on-one -on -one or in a group format so if people have any certain issues or if they want to talk to someone or if they're uh, having problems communicating about various different emotions or feelings, then they try to come into therapy or a counseling session. So what happens in art therapy is are, there are art therapists who use art or who help clients in creating art or making art. So most of the therapy sessions or counseling sessions are usually based on talk or conversations. Those are based on those are called as talk therapy but apart from talk therapy art therapy is also really growing uh, because in the field of art therapy what happens is apart from all the conversations that happen between a therapist and a client they include a lot of art formats and they help the client in creating various different arts so while someone is creating art they're trying to express their own feelings and emotions that's really hidden within them so art is also a uh, really great way of expression so uh, and across the world art therapy has been very very popular and research also says that art therapy has helped people reduce their stress and anxiety levels and for people who really cannot express through words or who cannot really communicate they try to express through art and their self-confidence and self-esteem has also improved or increased and it has a lot of mental health benefits so for someone who's interested to engage with people to understand or to help people and if you're someone who's also interested in the area of art or creating art then you could look at the field of art therapy most of the people uh, most of the people who want to pursue art therapy are mostly from psychology background because then they go on and use this in their therapy sessions so if you're someone who's looking to make a career in this particular area then you could in your graduation level you could pursue ba or bsc in psychology and after that you could do a diploma course in expressive arts therapy or art therapy and after your diploma course, if you still want to learn more about art therapy and what are the various forms of art that you could include and how to use it in a therapy setup, then you could also do a postgraduate diploma in art therapy. So if you're thinking after doing this particular certification or a diploma course, what are the job opportunities or where will I work? What is the scope? Then yes, a lot of hospital setups and a lot of rehabilitation centers hire a heart therapy. Uh, art therapists and there are also mental health centers and psychiatric organizations and clinics also who hire art therapists for various therapy programs then there are also senior citizen houses orphanages then there are different special schools and some of the ngos also hire art therapists they uh, a lot of them try to benefit from art therapy and it is proved to be really beneficial so this is also one of the career options that you could look at so if you're thinking what are the kind of institutes that's offering a certification course or a diploma in art therapy then there is indian uh, institute of psychology and research in bangalore which offers a certificate course then 
there is a uh, if you all know about fortis healthcare that's popular across india fortis hospitals so fortis hospital has tied up with unesco cid and they have a combined uh, certification course in expressive art, art therapy which also could be pursued then there is also one more institute in chennai called as women's christian college which has tied up with a counseling center east west center for counseling and they have a diploma program in art therapy then there are some other uh, some other therapy centers like uh, anantara art based therapy in mumbai sankalpa and pondicherry and earth counseling center and arts based therapy in mumbai then there's also abhyantar healing arts in new delhi so there are different different therapy centers different different uh, health centers and colleges offering this particular course in art therapy mostly it's a diploma course or a certificate course it is uh, available for 2 months 3 months some of them even have it for 6 months so if you're someone who's interested to work in the field of healthcare or if you're a psychologist or if you or if you're aspiring to make a career in the field of psychology and mental health or if you uh, want to also get into teaching or school counseling then you could think of considering art therapy as also one of the career options apart from that even if you're not interested to uh, really get into the field of psychology but if you are a graduate from any particular stream who wants to explore this particular therapy then it's open for even graduates to take up this particular certificate course or the diploma course yeah so moving on i have one more poll coming up for all of you you could look at your screens yeah do you dream of getting paid to play video games all day so these days there are a lot of video games that students and children and various uh, people play on a day to day basis so are you someone who's looking at getting paid to play video games would you really like it if someone pays you to play video games okay so there are 40% of them who say yes and 60% of them who say no so video game tester is also one of the unconventional career path that most of the students can look at so what video game testers do is they support game development team by playing different different versions of video game video games that are not yet available in the market so they test various different video games that's not available in the market or that is still under development and they try to see if there is any issue or if there is any bugs or if there is any uh, particular glitches or flaws in that particular game so video game testers they earn their living or they earn money by testing video games that's not yet released in the market and people who develop these games depend on such people because they want someone to test it on a day to day basis and give them inputs about what could be changed what is the issue and to report to them if there are any bugs although for some of the students this might seem like a really exciting or a interesting career option there is also a lot of attention and how to work that is required so if you're someone who is looking at getting into the field of video game testing then you need to pay a lot of attention to check what are the kind of issues that's there you need to know about the entire gaming concept as to what all is uh, what all needs to be there in a game and what what really attracts the gamers so you need to be aware of all of these aspects and also uh, pay attention to what are the kind of bugs or what are the kind of mistakes or how a game particular game could be improved and uh, if you are thinking of what are the opportunities where could i work there are there are a lot of gaming companies that hire video game testers and there are also some small time uh, gaming studios across the country who look for uh, game testers and there are also some companies who want people to work from their own home using their own gaming equipments whatever equipments you use your uh, uh your laptops or your uh, gaming keyboards all of that if you have all of that 
some of the companies also offer work from home roles to test games or your on your own equipments so if you're thinking what are the educational qualifications what do i need to be aware of how do i get into this particular field then uh, there are no particular academic requirements or educational requirements to become a video game tester however a little knowledge about the area of computer science programming software and hardware is really helpful if you know about this it will only be beneficial for you in this particular field so some of them after their class 12 they are they try to do a diploma or a certificate program in computer science or computer programming or some of them even who graduate in the field of computer science or video graphics or game design also think of taking up a, a career in the field of uh, video game testing so you need to be first aware to become a game tester or to become a video game tester you need to first decide if this game testing is really a career for you if you can focus and pay attention while you're playing game playing games uh, so if you're someone who's looking at considering this as your career path then you could also look at some short term or uh, degree programs or certificate programs that could suit this particular career like i've already mentioned some uh, programs related to computer science or software programming or game designing you could think of small time programs so uh, you also need to be you also need to have really good gaming skills be your dexterity using your hand using uh, the mouse keyboard and all needs to be really good so you also need to boost your skills related to the area of gaming and most of you who play video games are aware that there are different different vocabulary different different words that's used in game testing itself so you need to have these basic skills and also be aware of the vocabulary that's used in, for game testing okay so this is one of the career option that you could think of and this is also a, a career option that's growing now because there are a lot of video games that students are attracted to and if you want to start off your career in the uh, gaming industry then you could even think of getting into game testing yeah okay So the next particular career option that I would like to talk to you all about is travel blogger or travel vlogger. So what travel blog? Okay, first let me differentiate about blogger and vlogger. So blogger is someone who writes or someone who writes content for a particular blog, whereas a vlogger is someone who creates videos for a particular blog. So a blogger writes, whereas a vlogger makes videos. so what travel bloggers or vloggers do is considering there is lot of uh, internet uh, boom and social media uh, handles have been very very popular there are different different travelers who travel across the country across the states or even within the state they go to different different places and they record their own experiences either they write it or they video record it and they show it to their audience but if you're looking to make a career in travel industry in travel vlogging or blogging initially for you to start off it could be difficult and you might not earn some money so it is recommended that you have a full time or a part time job and then you consider travel blogging or vlogging until unless you have a good fan base and good or number of audience following you then uh, uh, until then blogging or vlogging could be really difficult for you so if you're someone who's really interested to travel and record your experiences and share your travel experiences with the people around the world then you could consider travel blogging or vlogging and uh, if you're looking at educational requirements or academic requirements for this particular career option and there are no particular academic or educational requirements but if you're someone who's considering blogging then have a uh, taking up a certificate course in creative writing will only hone your writing skills if you're already someone who's good at writing and wants to improve then you could consider taking up creative writing certification course but if you're someone who's making videos as a vlogger and oh, who's already skilled in making videos or who wants to improve then you could learn photography or video editing skills and there are a lot of free tools available wherein you can do a lot of trial and error and learn on a day to day basis so this 
to start off it might not be it might not be very rewarding when it comes to the income or money but moving on when you have a lot of uh, fan base a lot of audience following you there is a lot of income even in this particular field because what happens is once you have n number of fan followers there'll be different travel companies or travel brands who will look at collaborating with you and who will uh, pay you to promote their brands there will be different social media handles if you are someone who is blogging using youtube or instagram or facebook you can even earn through ads so this is also one of the option that you could look at and uh, if you are thinking of uh, creating a particular travel vlog or blog you need to also keep in mind what are you going to cover so some of the travel vloggers focus on a particular place how to get there how much did their trip cost or uh, what have they spent what are the places to eat where could they go they focus on these areas so if you want to make your blog unique you could think of what are, what are some of the other interesting content that you could look at but mostly to become a travel blogger or vlogger it is really important that you need to know about a particular place before even going there the history of that place or what is really unique about that place and why should people go there so having some knowledge about the history and significance of that place is really important and people look out people who are following you your audience or fans really look for high quality content so it is good if you uh, pay attention to all these details and if you improve your editing skills writing skills and if you also work on video editing and also having a degree in mass communication or journalism could really help you because a degree in mass communication and journalism will expose you to all of these topics like writing editing short film making video editing so you could think of a career in travel blogging and vlogging as well and there are different different communities or groups travel blogging and blogging communities or groups that's available online and there are different websites also that you could look into so if you want to seek help or if you want information or uh, first hand information about various different travel bloggers and vloggers you could join these communities and get information from them or you could even follow various travel bloggers and vloggers and learn from them and or see what are the kind of what is the kind of work that they're doing what are the equipments they're using or what are the kind of editing tools that they're using to put across their posts on the website or to put across their videos on youtube or instagram so travel blogging and vlogging is also a unconventional career option that most of them are looking at but initially to start off you uh if you're looking at income or revenue out of it it could be difficult so keep in mind if you're someone who's focused on revenue or income part to have a part time job or to have a full time job and then pursue this uh, side by side okay so yeah moving on i would like to talk to you about one more career path that's dancing so are you someone who wants to perform dance in various different events or are you someone who is looking at teaching dance dance is also one of the performing art careers and we all know what dance is and there are n number of dance forms that's available so dance is also one of the career option that you could look at so either you could be performing for various events or you could be teaching at various academies or schools or you could be a performer in films or shows or any live events uh some of them are some of them uh, who even get into the field of dancing try to choreograph and they perform in live shows as well so for most of them who are interested in the field of dancing usually they start their training from the age of 6 or from their childhood most of them uh, have this inborn talent for dancing or they're really good at it and then training and guidance only helps them improve their skills so if you if you have been uh, getting trained in the field of dance or any different dance form and if you want to make a career in dancing then you could even think of a career option in the field of dancing so there are different different dance forms based on your interest and based on 
what you want to do in the area of dancing you could think of how to make this your career path you could either be a teacher at a uh, dancing academy or dancing schools you could either be a choreographer a lot of them are making use of social media platforms these days to even teach dance so they use their youtube channels to teach da uh, dance videos or they put in dance tutorials or they do 5 minutes videos of various dance or they choreograph for various different events so there is plenty of opportunity even in the field of dancing so if you're looking at uh, some of the courses or training programs most of you uh, who are interested in dancing would have been trained in particular dance form but even apart from that if you still want to get into the field of dancing in india a lot of uh, courses that's offered in dance comes under performing arts career so if you're someone who's interested in dance you could look at ba in performing arts after your 11th and 12th and most of the dancing academies uh, if you look if you uh, know about the indian classical dance there are different different academies that offer uh, training in classical dance the same with other dance forms as well if you're looking at various different dance forms we all are aware of shamak dawar institute which offers uh, courses and training programs for different different dance forms so some of the institutes that's offering um, courses in the field of dance is karnataka sangeet and ritya academy bangalore there's also government college of music and dance in andhra pradesh then there's bharatiya vidya bhavan in bangalore then there's abhinaya institute of dance in mumbai then there's uh, Bha uh, bharata natya uh, niketan in new delhi center for indian classical dance new delhi and there's institute of music dance and dramatics in new delhi these are some of the dance institutes that focus completely on training and guidance in the area of dance so you could think of making a career in the area of dance also okay So moving on I want to talk about one more interesting career option that's there for most of them that's being a professional YouTuber so most of you who have joined us if you most of you would have watched YouTube so we know that any anything that you want to look at any sort of content is already available in uh, youtube anything that you want to learn you can just go type what is it that you want to learn and there are various videos that comes in So if you are someone who has a lot of knowledge in a particular area and who wants to share it with uh, people across the world then you could also consider getting into this particular area of uh, being a YouTuber So if you're someone who's good at science maths or you have any tips and tricks with related to your studies or if you're someone who's good at uh, singing music dance or if you can uh, a crack different jokes and if you are good at comedy or making pranks or if you are also uh, really interested in gaming and technology or if you have tried different games and if you want to share it with different people then you could there are uh, different different options or different different themes that you can focus on even in youtube so you need to first be aware of what is it that interests you or what is the content that you are really good at and that you could share with people across the world so one advantage of uh, being a youtuber is you have a lot of flexibility when it comes to work you'll be working all by yourself and there is a lot of ability to express yourself all your creative and artistic ways can be expressed uh, there are no set formats you could follow your own templates your own themes and formats so there is a uh, uh there is lot of opportunity to be creative and open and uh, also once you have good number of subscribers you also tend to gain lot of popularity and fame and we all know there are lot of professional youtubers who are gaining success in this field so if you really want to get started or get started with a career in this particular field then you have to be aware of what is the type of content that you will create or what is the message that you want to pass on to people or to people across the what and again for being a professional youtuber you do not require any particular educational requirement but having a diploma or having a degree in mass communication or journalism or media will only help you or will be beneficial for you because in this particular degree you get all the basics and hands on experience of how to shoot a particular video how to edit it what is required what are the essentials of uh, video editing and video creation 
or if you're someone who's uh, not interested to pursue a three year degree course and you want to learn it in a short time, then you could also think of a short term course in filmmaking or a short term course in video editing. This is also some of the options that you could really look at. So uh, some of them even go on and pursue uh, courses, short term courses in cinematography, editing or acting. If you really want to, uh, if you're a comedian or if you're a prankster or if you want to focus on anything related to acting, then you could also focus on a diploma or certification course in acting. And uh, in the same way uh, for travel blogging and blogging, whatever I've mentioned, in the same way, initially as students, you might not have a, a lot of money to spend on different different courses and equipment. So you could use a lot of freely available tools to edit your videos, to record your videos and to create different themes and templates. So there are also some of uh, some free online courses about uh, YouTube essential skills that uh, YouTubers require on how to create content and once you have content, how to circulate it and how to make it popular. So you could also take these free courses. And uh, once you have good number of fan following or good number of subscribers and uh, to your YouTube channel, then you YouTube partners with you. The partnership with your own account and YouTube will help you in earning revenue out of it as well. So there are different different advertisements that will be played before your video starts and uh, between and at the end of your videos. So these advertisements will help you in gaining money. And again, same with any other social media platform. Once you have good uh, an amount of subscribers, different different brands and different different companies related to your particular content will try to approach you or will try to collaborate with you to promote different different products. So by promoting these products also, you tend to get earn money. So this is also one of the career options that you could look at. And uh, apart from this, there is also makeup artists for people who are interested in to make a career in the field of uh, glamour industry or fashion industry. Uh, makeup is makeup being a makeup artist is also one such career option so you can work for n number of tv channels tv shows theaters or you can have your own platform uh, even when it comes to makeup not many people uh, take professional or certification course some of them are self-taught they learn by themselves through trial and errors or they've watched some videos and they've learned it all by themselves but if you really want to professionally take up a particular course then you after your class 12 you could pursue diploma or crash course in makeup there is no degree courses available in india for makeup and uh, there are plenty of options available in this industry also you could be a makeup artist for a celebrity or you could be a stylist for a celebrity you could work in retail stores uh, all the stores that sell makeup products you could work in those stores as well or you could work in saloons and spas and you could work as a makeup artist for theaters and tv shows or you could work as makeup artist for private or uh, i mean for public events as well so some of the institutes that's offering uh, courses in the area of makeup is JD Institute of Fashion Technology, Bangalore. There's Sharna Hussain International Beauty Academy in Delhi. Then there's Lakme Academy, Mumbai and Delhi. There's VLCC Institute of Beauty that's uh, in multiple locations. So you could go on uh, and search for any of these institutes and you'll get more details about this course. The minimum criteria to get into this particular course course is you need to have finished your class 10 and then finished your 11th and 12th and then you could pursue this course and after your 12th you could do a full-time course or a part-time course yeah so these are some of the career options that's uh, unconventional and that's unique apart from that apart from these i have some more that's listed out in just brief so there's also spa management if you look at various uh, spa centers and places that provide massage even you could look at a career in spa management so there are different different spa training institutes in india where you will learn more about uh, how you will learn more about a good spa and about different different massages and you can also think of making a career in this particular field so there's ananda spa institute in hyderabad and orient spa academy in jaipur and there are many other spa institutes and academies who offer diploma course in spa management as well 
And there's also an interesting career called as tea tasting. So what happens in tea tasting is tea taster is not only a particular person who uh, tries tea or tastes tea. What they do is they have to identify different different uh, and they have to differentiate between different teas and they have to also give advice on how this particular tea could be made or how it could be brewed to achieve a particular taste. So there are diff many colleges in India offering degree and diploma courses in tea management also. So I've listed out a few of them. You could check it out if you're interested. There's Birla Institute of Futuristic Studies. There's uh, Assam Agricultural University and there's Indian Institute of Plantation Management. There's Tea Research Association. So all of these institutes provide uh, diploma and degree courses in tea management and some of them have even have a certificate course in tea tasting and marketing. Then uh, one last career option that I would like to tell you all is for people who really like pets and who really like animals, there is also one particular career option even uh, in this particular field called as pet grooming. In India, it's a new concept and it's uh, gradually picking up and growing. But what pet groomers do is they are responsible for a particular pet. They need to take care of the pet. Uh, they need to take care of its hygiene, of its appearance. They need to also be aware of if that particular pet is having any health issue and uh, they need to take care of the pet. So most of them can choose this as a full time career option or as a part time also, depending on your passion and de depending on your fondness for the pets, depending on how much you like to spend time with your pets. So you could, um, so what happens is you could choose between cats, dogs, horses, any of these pets. As it is a new concept in India, there are only few institutes offering uh, courses or certificate courses in pet grooming. So if you look at uh, what I've mentioned, Whiskers and Tails Franchisee and Pet Grooming Academy in Mumbai, and there's Fuzzy Wuzzy Professional Pet Grooming School. Uh, these are uh, two of the institutes that's providing certification in pet grooming. So if you're someone who's interested to look after pets and to take care of them, then this is also a new career option that's available. Okay, yeah. So these are some of the career options that I have listed out for unconventional career paths that's there for students, apart from all the popular ones. Although some of them uh, might seem difficult, there is a lot of success, but only if you uh, stay dedicated, only if you uh, put in a lot of efforts, can you find success in these career paths as well. Initially, it could be uh, it could be difficult because there are no prof not many courses have uh, professional programs or guidance. So you will be learning on your own and making your career. So it could be difficult in the initial stage, but once you gradually have uh, good knowledge and if you have put in lot of practice then you could really be successful in these career paths also so as i mentioned uh, at era foundation we have our own career guidance tool so i would like to give you all a brief about that so uh, our career guidance tool is called as mark so in mark we have four important tests that we do or four important assessments to for career guidance. One is subject-based test, wherein we test the student in four different subjects, that's science, social, mathematics, and English. Then we have the aptitude test, wherein we test the student's natural ability or uh, what is it that they are good at. So we test them on uh, six different aptitudes like numerical ability, verbal ability, abstract reasoning, spatial reasoning, and uh, speed and accuracy. Then there's also interest test wherein we try to understand what is a particular student interested in? What does he or she like? So there is interest test which assesses 12 area of career interest. Then there's personality test wherein we try to understand uh, how is a student's personality, whether he or she is really helpful, kind, how is this person? So we try to understand them on these four different aspects. And this is a two and a half hour test. It can be taken online and it can be taken anywhere at your home, uh, at an internet cafe or at school. And there's also 5,000 questions data bank that we have created for the subjects of science, maths, social science, and English. 
And uh, once you take the test, we give you a customized report wherein we will be providing career recommendations, the three best career options that suitable career options that suitable for you based on your interest test, based on your aptitude test, and based on your subject performance. So this is at uh, www.markforyou.com and you could also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and YouTube to get more career related information and to gain more uh, uh, information about different different career paths that's available for students. So by this we come to an end of today's webinar.